Hey, who earlier today beat Tavani Yamaguchi in the semi-final. Busy signing autographs. That's absolutely wonderful to uh, see because she'll be thinking about tomorrow's final. In fact, tomorrow she's trying to become the first Chinese winner of the women's singles for six years. And if she wins tomorrow, it will be her seventh World Tour title of the year. And she would go to number one in the world rankings. But still time for all her fans. That's wonderful. So this is uh, back inside the Tianhe Gymnasium. And so to our third semi-final of the evening session. It's men's doubles and it's Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe, a beaten finalist last year up against Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamolio, the winners of this title two years ago. Now, as you can see, they both came through from a Group A. In fact, it was Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe that won the group. In the opposite group, the reigning world champions, the Sun and Setia won. They lost to uh, Li and Wang in uh, their last group decider as to who topped the group. That's the draw for the semi-final stage. The winners of each uh, group, the group A, uh, go to the top of the draw, and the winners of group B to the bottom of the draw. And uh, then it's drawn for who plays against who in the semi-finals from the second uh, people or pair within the groups. Well, when we look at the uh, career win-loss records of these two pairs, Endo and Watanabe have won seven, or been in seven career finals, winning three titles, and two of them this year, the German Open and the Babington Asia Championships. Gideon and Sukamolio have an astonishing record, as you can see. Their career win-loss record translates into 35 uh, tournaments, and they're looking this week for a 30th career title. Seven titles, eight titles, I beg your pardon, already this year. Eight World Tour titles. But here are the Japanese pair, the left-handed Watanabe and Endo. Endo actually looking to reach his third final here because he was in the final with Kenichi Hawakawa. Now, in the very first match of the round robin, that was on Wednesday, they beat the number three seeds, Kamora and Sonoda, the beaten finalists from three years ago. And then on Thursday, they beat their opponents of today, Gideon and Sukamolio, in three games. Then on Friday, they beat the defending champions, Li Jun Kuei and Liu Yu Chen very comfortably indeed, and I think that was the best I've seen them for some considerable time, perhaps ever, in the way that the Japanese pair played. Marcus Fernaldi Gideon is on the right as we're looking at them, and the hugely entertaining Kevin Sanjaya Sukamolio. He is so quick at the front of the court and uh, comes out with uh, shots that I don't think other players could even imagine playing. He's a very creative player indeed. They have been in nine tournament finals uh, this year, winning eight World Tour titles because the only final they lost was the Badminton Asia Championships, and that was to their opponents of today. Wednesday beat the defending champions in three games, uh, then lost to Endo and Watanabe in three games, and then had to beat the Komora and Sonoda, the number three seeds in yesterday's encounter to qualify for today's semi-final stage. So here come the winners of Group A, Hiroyuki Endo and the left-handed Yuta Watanabe. Lost in the final last year to Li Junhui and Liu Yu Chen in two straight games. But the man we're looking at, the man in front there, was struggling with a right calf injury. But all credit to him, he carried on playing. So to the world number ones, Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamolio. Won the title here two years ago 
uh, beating the then world champions, Liu Cheng and Zhang Nan. Withdrew last year in their third and final match of the group, so that automatically meant that they finished fourth within the group. And as you can see, this is a seventh meeting between these two pairs. And Endo and Watanabe have won four of the six previous. But the really interesting statistic is that the four that they've won have all been played this year. All their meetings this year between these two pairs have been won by Endo and Watanabe. The last time, of course, was on Thursday in Group A. So this is the man who's the most experienced. He's going to turn 33 in two days' time on Monday. Was in the final, as I say, with Hawakawa in 2012, lost out to Bowen Mogensen. This is actually his fourth semi-final because he was also in the semi with Hawakawa in 2014. And of course, he was in the final a year ago with his partner of today. Yuta Watanabe is playing his second semi-final of the day uh, because he started off proceedings this morning in the mixed doubles with Arisa Higashino and they lost out to the world champions. So he needs to bounce back from that defeat. And as you can see, they're currently number six in the world ranking, but they have been as high as four as a pair. Endo was as high as two with his former partner, Hawakawa. Marcus Fernaldi Gideon is 28 years of age now. And he and his partner are enjoying their 128th week in total as world number ones. It's actually their third spell as world number ones. Kevin Sanjaya Sulkamolio is the younger of the two men. He's 24 years of age, born in Bangiwangi. And uh, they uh, finished the year ranked number one on the race to Guangzhou. And in doing so, became the first men's doubles pair to the end the year ranked number one three consecutive times. There's one other player that's finished number one on the race to the end of year championships three times, and that was Yu Young Sung, but with two different partners, and it wasn't consecutive. 2010 with Go Sung Hyung and 2014 and 15 with Lee Yong Day. So as you saw, our court officials, Kelly Hall from Australia, the umpire, Henrik Boas from Denmark, the service judge. Indonesian coach, familiar figure. I was posing the question uh, the other day, I wonder how many great men's doubles pairs he's coached over the years. Well, we look at the Japanese coaching bench, Park Jubong on the left as we look at them, and former Malaysian player, Tan Kim Ho. Rates as one of the best men's doubles coaches, do you think, from the players he's produced, Harry Pamagi? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. the world number one is the former champions far side of the court Gideon and Sukumolio against Endo and Watanabe so Steen I was uh, saying that the Indonesian pair have won eight titles this year they played 16 tournaments, so they won 50% of all tournaments played. Yeah. That's incredible. Amazing. Oh. 
It also shows that we have a number of profiles when that is not enough to become player of the year. Yes. Because that went uh, to, uh, quite fairly, in my opinion, to Kento Momota. Yeah. And maybe um, maybe they were actually only third there because the other uh, nominee was Chang Si Wei in the mixed doubles. So whether mm. they were second or third, that's that's uh, yeah, very good that's point. That's arguable. I think the start of this ma uh, match here is going to be really, really important. Um, some good defense there from Sukumulio. Valley. Yeah, it was. And and the reason I think it's going to be really important is that I mean, they've lost three times this year, Sukumurio and Gideon. There, there's no other pairs lost that four, they... Four times this year. Four times. They, there's no other pair that they've had such problems with as Watanabe and uh, Endo. We've discussed, you suggested, Jill, earlier that Sukumurio thrives when there's only one court. Yeah. When... Uh, when he's in the spotlight. He's when he's in the spotlight. So what will prevail here? He's in the spotlight. Will will that be enough? Will he go wild and uh, sort of take the combination to a, a higher level? Or will Endo and, and Watanabe again uh, be successful in putting a lot of pressure on, um, on uh, Marcus Gideon, who clearly has got difficulties in um, in sort of uh, stamping his authority in the attack against uh, Watanabe and uh, Endo. But it's, it's not just that the Japanese players have been defending very well against uh, Watanabe. There must be something that the this Japanese pair have worked out or something in their style of play that the Indonesians are really struggling with. Yeah, I think, f uh, first of all, they're both very quick on their feet, both Endo and, um, and Yuta Watanabe. And then um, I saw a little bit of their first match. A lot of their defense seems to be flat drives that goes past um, uh, Kevin Sukumulio. Oh, he's lost his racket there. I thought he was gone. Oh, misunderstanding. Uh, so, so they're just playing as flat as possible. They're lifting flat to um, to Marcus Gideon, and he's got trouble getting the angle so that he can activate uh, Kevin Sukumulio. And even if he's good, he's not good. He's fantastic on the front yeah. court. But if if the shuttles are flying flat past him, he will only hit so many of them. And and if you're ready with the racket, then you uh, have a chance of of getting it back to to Gideon on on the back court there. So, so that has caused a lot of trouble uh, for them in the previous match in this right. um, group and the interesting thing to see is if um, they've been able to come up with a with a solution to Indonesian players right now it doesn't look that way but they're also uh, playing on the uh, for them uh, more difficult side Good 
This is amazing. Oh, it's called out. It's gone long off the back line. But a really, really good rally for the Japanese pair. Because I don't see Kevin and um, Marcus winning this way. I don't think they can do it, but um, they're here perhaps to surprise me. And, and that, this is why there's simply too many of those miss hits in, in uh, regular situations. And, and I don't think the Japanese pair um, makes as many as, as the Indonesians. So they've got to have the attack. They've got to activate Sukumulio. Yeah, like that. Yeah, but he, that, that was exactly the example. Flat past him, he gets it, but Indo and uh, Watanabe can, can play on. It's in, it's right. in. They're challenging that. They beg to differ. You thought the drift brought it back in. Incidentally, that rally of 72 shots we had a couple of rallies ago was the longest rally of the day. Not just this match. All semi-finals so far. Well done, Sting. Eagle eye. Yep, thank you. Going wide. Yep. Oh, that's a super shot. Well, There's the start of something. Sukimulia looking at uh, Gideon touching his uh, chest around where the heart is. Got to, uh, got to get something going, but it's difficult for the two Indonesians. Well, it's a two-point advantage for Indo and Watanabe. Well, before semi-finals got underway today, Steve, I was busy trying to research about male players uh, being in two finals or winning the doubles double. Of course, that can't happen now because he's already lost his uh, mixed doubles semi-final, Yuta Watanabe. But it's interesting because no male player has ever contested two finals within the same uh, Super Series or World Tour finals. No. It, it's becoming different disciplines, mixed doubles yeah. and, and the... Uh, 
men's and women's doubles. That is a super shot. Steen, I was uh, saying a little earlier that I thought that Endo and Watanabe in the last of their group matches uh, yesterday evening, we called the match against last year's champions, Lee Jun Hui and Liu Yu Chen. And I really thought that the Japanese pair were probably playing as well as I've ever seen them play. play. Yeah, they seem to have a lot of confidence, and you can see. Oh, yeah. oh goodness. Yeah. There's, there's no respect at all for the Indonesian attack. If yeah. they're in trouble, they just lift. Yeah. Totally um, um, relying on their own defense. <laughs> but... Um, with the change of ends, Gideon and Sukimuyo, they get a little bit extra help in uh, their attack. And I mean, they're definitely not out of this uh, first game no. uh, yet. It's five points, and uh, we've seen them score many more points in double quick time at yeah. other occasions. But it just seems really solid, uh, Watanabe and Endo's game at the moment. That's a good smash. And there he had time to get up in the air, get some angle on his smashes. Um, Marcus Gideon. Anticipated. Oh, yes. That is a terrific rally by the Japanese combination. Total satisfaction with uh, Park Jobong. Oh, that's a great shot from Watanabe. That cross court net shot. In fact, it wasn't really a net shot, it was just guiding it yeah. into the open space, wasn't it? have not come up with any solution since a Thursday's match. Certainly not so far. They haven't come up with any solutions. Against Endo and Watanabe all year. Well, 
the play from Hero Yuki Hendo. And it is total destruction. Total destruction. He can't um, make a difference in uh, his attacking game, Marcus Gideon, and he can't withstand his defense. So it's looking bleak at the moment. Interesting whether the change of ends will provide any change, but uh, I think I guess this is hard for self confidence as well. So, opening game really rather easily for Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe. 21-11. Just about a ticking over 15 minutes. Dean, I don't know if you've seen what I've just seen, but Coach Harry was uh, arms out saying, talking to Gideon as, as if to say, come on, man, what, you know, don't you want this? I've stared at him for two minutes and yeah. he's been talking to Gideon for the first one minute and 20 seconds. Yeah. Trying to sort of drag him up of the hole that the Japanese players have put him in. Yeah. And it's going to be difficult, but the first thing I, I think is to accepting and realizing who am I and not trying to do something that, that he can't do. Yeah. And then he's got to hope that That's that uh, Sukumulio gets a chance to, um, to get involved. Now, yeah. if he gets attacking opportunities, he can attack, but he needs to attack with steepness and angle, and he's got to play drop shots as well. He cannot just attack with power, power, power. Mm. But but it's it's the whole game is broken down. And that's another interesting thing. When yeah. Gideon missed that, did you see Sukumolio's reaction? I didn't see it. it. He was sort of like, oh no, what's he doing now? Yeah. You know, now you've got to work as a pair. How even if your partner's having a bad day, you've got to give support and keep giving encouragement. And I've seen it before with the Indonesians where they start to beat up on each other a little yep. if things aren't going their way. Oh, well, the line judge, judge saying unsighted. So the umpire, Kelly Hoare, is going to ask for Hawkeye to adjudicate. It must have been so close, or maybe the line judge just lost focus or concentration for a moment. So nobody will lose any challenges. It's the umpire that's asked for the Hawkeye decision on that shuttle at the back of the court. Yeah, but uh, it is concerning. It, was long. it is concerning for, for Gideon and Sukumuli because uh, this is no coincidence anymore. Well, we've actually just 
managed to get hold of a translation of what was said to the Indonesians by their coach, Coach Perry. And he was saying to Kevin Sanjaya Sukumolio that he had to be more daring at the front of the court, try and get more involved and really go for his shots. And he wants Gideon uh, to uh, use more of the channel attack. That's the attack down the centre of the court. Oh, service fault called. Too high, called on Sukumolio. Wants him to hit down the centre, and I assume, Steen, that's so that that narrows the angle of reply, which means yeah. that there's more chance... More of chance of activating Sukumolio. Exactly. And a more difficult... Um Defensive shot. Yeah, now the body language of the Indonesians really, really bothers me right now. <laughs> They're in trouble. They're yeah. getting challenged, and it's a good challenge from uh, Watanabe and Endo. Service return, excellent uh, third shot. It's not correct, fourth shot by uh, Sukumurio. What was the score in the first match here in the group stage, uh, Joe? Was it, it was straight games as well? No, it was three games. And the uh, Japanese player won 21-11, 14-21, 21-11 in the deciding game in an oh. hour and five minutes. that error from Gideon. Sukumolio turned away from him and walked to the back of the court, so there was no eye contact at all. No, no, it's, it's, um, it's really a challenge here, be, but it, it, this has, this is not just the World Tour Finals, it has much more perspective. It's, um, it's um, all the way to the Olympics. There is no chance of making any changes should they wish to change the combinations. It's impossible. You can't do it and still qualify. No, exactly. So, if I were the two Indonesians right now, I would speculate and say, this is not looking as good as, as um, it has done for uh, Olympic success. Things are getting more difficult. And... Um, I think it, it, it plays on their minds at the moment right now, especially on the mind of Kevin Sukumulio. Um and, and Gideon, he's, there's a lot, I think, playing on his mind because he's clearly struggling. Yeah. He's hitting it directly. There was the middle smash. Yeah. And, as soon and, that as he, and that worked as soon as he hit down the centre in between the two Japanese players. There, that one. Forces the weak reply and gets Sukumolio involved at the front of the court. We should remember that Gideon has got a lot on his mind at the moment, of course, because his whole circumstances have changed. He's had a baby son this year. So, so it's not just the badminton thing's on his no. mind. He's now got a family to look after. They've... Um, oh, that's well played. Back in the match, they have. Yeah. It's 10-7. So 
this is um, as good as they could hope for so far, in my opinion. Gideon and Sukumurio. And um, as soon as the points get on the scoreboard, I would suggest um, Sukumurio to get more confident and hopefully also uh, Marcus Gideon from an Indonesian perspective. Good block. Adventurous. That's what the coach was after. Isn't it amazing, Postine, that how the whole energy of this second game has just seemed to turn in an instant? There was me a moment ago saying they were the body language was all wrong. It was. Yeah. It's still not good enough, but it's understandable when you're used to being dominant and you're suddenly <laughs> on the other end of um, of the rope, so to speak. Yeah, for six straight points. Wow, we've got a real match on our hands now. And, and there's, there's a lot of pressure on, on uh, Mark Gideon because, I mean, everybody can see the spectacular shots and winners that uh, Sukumulio is is doing so it's so easy for everyone to say okay if they lose it's Marcus's fault yeah not necessarily I mean maybe he could succeed we've seen him succeed with um, with Marcus Kido as well and so on yeah so but but it's just the perception that oh Sukumulio is such a fantastic player and Gideon should be lucky to play with him and mm. so on so there's a lot of pressure on him yeah Eight straight points now. Oh, service so all called again. Second time on Sukumolio. Shuttle not below the 1.15 meter mark. Um, rally again for the Indonesians, but this is one of the situations where it's difficult to be Marcus Gideon when when he's playing uh, the front player and, and Sukumulio is playing the backcourt because who knows where Sukumulio is going to mm. hit it? Nobody does. No. So it's difficult to be the front court player of Sukumulio. Oh, look at that! That's fabulous. of the last 11 points. Yeah, and I think um, Watanabe and Endo, they're going to let this game um, slip away. Going wide. Yeah. We're going to see them in, in the third game, I think, if, you know, when, uh, in the second part of the third game, we're going to see them target Gideon a lot more. They haven't been disciplined enough here in this second game the way I see it. They had a man that was totally down, almost out, and then they started playing 
Sukumulio. Uh, yeah. Um, makes no sense in my no. um, in no. my uh, mind why they do that. Uh, I agree with you. I agree. Turn of serve. was a challenge here from the Indonesians. They thought that was long. They're not giving any pace to uh, Watanabe and um, Endo at the moment. So if they want to create something, they've got to do it themselves. Oh, that's delightful. Game point opportunities. The level is semi-final at one game apiece. Basically, been points have been scored in the opposite position with the Indonesians from what they normally do. We touched upon it on the first match yeah. that they were actually looking stronger with the uh, Gideon at the net and Sukumulu at the back court against the uh, Liu. Oh. oh, that was, was yesterday's yeah. match. No, um, against Kamura and Sonoda. No, Gideon and Sukumulu played Kamura and Sonoda yesterday. Uh, maybe, yes, it was, yes, maybe it was yes. this match. No, they won the first match against Lee and Liu on, uh, on Wednesday. Yeah. Sorry, I do beg your pardon. Oh, that's nice. points have come and gone. It is indeed one game all. 21 15, the second game to the world number ones. Gideon and Sukumolio. I'm not 
sure his strings broke. Immediately looks at his racket. No, I don't think it was strings, it was just mistimed. So one game a piece. Well, as the players return to court, I have to say, Steen, it still bothers me that there wasn't an awful lot of eye contact or communication between the two Indonesian players. Yeah, yeah. And both w listening to once we had, once we had, um, it, when I was coaching in Denmark, we had uh, a guy from the SEAL team out uh, to talk to us and uh, do some exercises and from so on. From the military, you mean? From the military. Yeah, yeah. He said, sometimes we cannot talk polite, sometimes we cannot be polite, sometimes we just got to get things done one way or the other because we're both working for the same goal. Mm. And um, if, if we uh, don't get things done, in the SEAL team, well, then we, we risk our lives. So so uh, sometimes you've got to be able to uh, to cope with that. You cannot expect the support of your partner and that he's carrying you on hands and feet. You've got to step up yourself. Yeah. If you don't step up, you don't belong here. Wow, yeah. And match because I mean, both pairs are trying to figure out what we can do to uh, outmaneuver yeah. the others. Uh, so it's it's changing all the time and Gideon Sukumuli made a great change in, in the second game so now it's up to Vatsanava and Ender to figure out what, what are we going to do about this yeah. that they're taking out the pace and we're not getting the same uh, shots to work with as we did in the first game. Then we get rallies like this, amazing match. Yeah, but it's interesting you talk about the outmaneuvering because one of the things the Indonesian coach was saying in that interval was uh, to play uh, to the half court area from the net. So you're not playing net shots, you're not playing to the back of the court, but you're playing past the front court player, but still in front of the rear court player. And that will move the Japanese players. Yes, and, and it, it's not as risky because it's more difficult to kill it from uh, the mid court, even if yeah. it's a little bit of an inaccurate shot. Whereas if it's at the net, then you're in, um, in dire straits. It's woefully short, really. That serve. Oh, tried to leave it, tried to get out of the way, but it hit him.
Well, I can tell you, the Indonesian coach shouting instruction after that rally, pointing to the back corner. I think he may have been talking about the drift again because he certainly mentioned the drift in between the second and third games. Oh, what a rally. There's a little half court push. There. Now that's what you were talking about earlier, Steve. Steepness of shot. Not necessarily always having to hit hard for the angles. Just trying to help as much as they can. Always a fine line. And that was a. Uh, and now, now the body language. Now I'm. Um, more on your page still because it's like Sukumuli is like putting his arms to the side saying what, what, what can I do what do you want me to do yeah and uh, early 16, seeing Yu Yang and uh, uh, Tang Yuan Ting. Yuan Ting play. Yeah, in fact, Tsukamolio had his hands on his hips there. Yeah, but uh, he's made two mistakes now on the wind side, and I, I guess everything is just in a blur in... Uh, in Gideon's head at the moment. He's landed in. Yeah. And now his, his partner is challenging. And challenging. That's, that's just ridiculous. It, and he knows it's in. Yeah. He, he was the one that was closer and he knows it's in. So five straight points for Endo and Watanabe. That push is long, and that's six straight points for the pair that seeded six in this tournament, Endo and Watanabe. Steen as the players change ends seven point advantage for the Japanese pair uh, I know that we've talked about Gideon perhaps not having the best of days but I'm now thinking about what we get told every time we get on the aeroplane and if there's an oxygen shortage put your oxygen mask on first before you help others and I think that uh, Gideon uh, Whilst he's having a bad day, I think Sukumolio needs to concentrate on what he's doing because he's starting to make unforced errors. He needs to look after himself first yeah. to be able to help his partner. But if the Japanese are playing this correctly, then Sukumolio has no chance. 
mm. because he can't, uh, th then he needs to push Gideon out of the court mm. because he's simply making too many errors. And I, I feel also that Gideon is walking around feeling a little sorry for himself. Yeah. Indonesian fan. That's well left. This is where I would expect them to target Gideon, and I don't think they've done it in the first three rallies. So, eight point advantage. Service error. I think that's the first service error by the Japanese players. sudden the dynamics could change three terrible points by the Japanese no good umpire work yeah what's an but not allowed to tell down They can still make it, the Indonesians. Yeah. And there's certainly some um, Indonesian fans there urging them on. That, that's amazing. I, I don't understand the Japanese um, game plan here. I think that's probably the longest rally of this deciding game so far. be a costly area error from Sukamolio. Yeah, suddenly he gets a chance where he really likes to get yes. it and uh, then misses. So from what's an habit. Oh yes, that's a wonderful drop shot from Hiroyuki Endo. Double hit, wasn't yeah, it? it? Was. Well, justice in the end. 
Endo looks up at the umpire as if to say, did you not see that double hit? And Park look at, looks at the umpire outside the picture. And they did well to continue the rally, um, Endo and Watanabe. Yeah, good professionalism. I can remember coach telling me when I was very young, you never think the rally is won until you've heard the umpire call the fault. Don't stop, just keep on playing. serve yeah. yeah they're playing well endo and watanabe and time is running out for the world number ones. That's it as well. Steen, do you remember that at 9.13 at there was a sitter for Saw Camolio yeah, he and, missed it. and he missed it. They haven't won a point since. No. And I said that could be costly. And so it's proved to be. Three points away from booking their place in their second consecutive final. What would be a third final for Hiro Yuki Endo at this event. That's going wide. Two points away from a second consecutive final. a lot of work ahead of uh, Gideon and Sukumulio. A lot of mental work, a lot of uh, work on court as well. <laughs> Match point opportunities. And they've done it. Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe for a second time this week beat the world number ones. For a fifth time this year, they beat Gideon and Sukumolio. 21 10 in the deciding game. And the Indonesians need to go away and think very hard about what is going wrong within their partnership. Targeting Gideon in that last rally. And for Hiroyuki Endo, what a chance to win in his third final at this end of year championship in his third final tomorrow wouldn't that be a wonderful early birthday present because on monday he will celebrate his 33rd birthday a confirmation of the score 21 11 15 21 21 10 in the deciding game coming up next is a women's doubles and it's an all japanese affair it's a repeat of the last two world championship finals fukushima and hirota up against the reigning world champions matsumoto 
and Nagahara. So welcome back to Guangzhou. 